need some pens to write with. That's today's activity. We need some pens. Oh, these ones are the gooders. Okay, um, cosine law. So, where did my formula sheet go? I'm gonna grab a formula sheet for a second. Cosine law is already on your formula sheet. Um, it is sine law and then cosine law, okay? Um, okay, we're just gonna go with this. Uh, all right, so let's write out. So we're gonna use the cosine law when you have two sides and an angle that cannot be set up into a ratio. So no matching set. No. What does that mean? Um, when we did sine law, you needed to have a matching set. You had to have the angle and its matching side. So if I had 30 degrees here and I had a side of five and a side of four, I would use cosine law to, or sine law to solve this one because I have my matching set right here. Okay, thank you. No problem. And so cosine law we're going to do when we don't have a matching set. So that's what cosine law is going to help us do. Um, you can use cosine law to find an angle when you have all three sides. Okay? So when you're given no, ang no angles and you have all three sides, you can use it then as well. All right. So these are the earmuffs. Um, so a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Doesn't that sound familiar? Um, minus 2bc cos of a. And in cosine law, it requires the use of cos. And in sine law, you use sine. Nicely labeled. Um, so I want to show you guys these, the earmuffs of your equation. Uh, they have to match. Now, you don't have to know both of them, but they have to match. So if I'm looking for, like, let's say I have a triangle. Um, let's say I have Z, P, and Q. Uh, let's say I have, let's say I have all three sides, and I want to find angle Z. So this is 12, this is 9, and this is 13. And I'm trying to find angle Z. Everybody with me so far, if that's my example? Then the way I would set this up is, if I want this to be Z, like I'm solving for cosine Z, then the side Z has to be outside. They're the earmuffs of your equation. They have to match. Does that make sense to everybody? So this would look like uh, Z squared, side Z squared, so... Um, and then I put the other two letters. So we'd have Q squared plus P squared minus 2PQ cos of angle Z. So the only, like, so the things I want to solve are the earmuffs of the equation. Okay? They're earmuffs of the equation. Okay. Uh, okay, I think we're good. Everybody understand that? Like that's the most important thing with this is that all the other sides live inside of it and your earmuffs are on the outside. That's... It doesn't matter what B and C are. As long as they're not the stuff you're trying to solve for. They're the other things that you have. Okay, what do all interior tri angles of a triangle add up to? What? 180. Um, so just keep that in mind too, because that's always going to play into this when I ask you to solve a triangle. Okay, so this question is asking for the distance between the two aircrafts. So I'm trying to find that distance here. All right. So the way I'm going to solve this, so I'm going to solve for a side first, okay? That's pretty much the easiest thing to do. Um, so we're going to solve for a side. So I know my earmuffs are going to be side D and angle D. Everybody with me so far here? Easy peasy. So we're going to have D squared equals... Okay. Um, is side D the, the aircraft one to aircraft two? Yeah. Then why does it have 
an O on the Oh, sorry. It's an origin. That's all. Can I put D? Yep, yes. absolutely. Yeah, we'll, let's label that D. What are we going to label the other sides? What are we going to label the other vertices? Like E, F. Sure. Okay. Everybody good with that? I think they just use the letter D there for distance. Right? Like it wasn't... Um, they just dropped a D on there instead of an X or whatever. So we're going to have D squared equals side length. It doesn't matter if E or F comes together, which one comes first, because they're added, right? So adding doesn't matter if I add 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2. We get the same answer. It's just like multiplying. So um, let's go in order. So E would be 50 squared plus... F, which would be 72 squared, minus 2 times 50 times 75 times by the cos of 49. Pardon? Oh, 72, sorry. Okay, so if, because um, you said like something about the ear must, so is A and like cos A always going to be the side or angle you don't have? Yes, yeah, it's gonna be the thing that you're solving for, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's do some math. So order of operation really matters here. It matters all the time, but I find that that's a common mistake that people do is they don't follow order of operations. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deal with my squareds. That's going to be first. And then I'm probably going to do... So this is all multiplied together. So that's going to happen second. Right? So order of operation really matters in this. Um, I find a lot of people do this. They do these and then they subtract. Um, subtract 2 from it and then do the multiplying. It's very confusing. So remember order of operations. So 50 squared is 2,500. So D squared equals 2,500 plus 72 squared, which is 5,184 minus, now I'm going to multiply this. And we know that cos of 49 is going to give me a decimal, right? And we don't round until our final answer. So 2 times 50 times 72 times cos of 49. And I'm going to get 4,723.625009. You need all the decimal places, ladies and gentlemen, because we do not round until the final answer. And we still have a square root to do as well. So there's still some things that are going to give us a decimal. So keep on keeping on. I'm going to add these together. So I'm going to have 7,623 minus 4723.625009. Um, seven, six. So if I subtract those two things, I'm going to get 2,960.3749. 374991. Everybody good with that? I'm not finished yet, so I'm going to go ahead and square root both sides because I don't want d squared, I just want d. And in my calculator, I can do that second function answer thing, so I'm able to do that. So I get d is equal to 54.409322. Eight one six. Okay, if it doesn't tell us what to round to, we always go to two decimal places. So D is going to be equal to 54.41. And then I need my units of measure. Do I have units of measure? Kilometers. I find it easier to solve for the side than I do for the angle.
Everybody good with that? Do you want like all of that work shown? All of it? What would you skip? Like probably the the last part. Yeah. Like this part and this part? Yeah. Like the third part and the You'd second skip part. this one? Yeah. And, and this then, one. Yeah. I'm fine with skipping this one. I'm fine okay. with skipping this one. Okay. Those are fine to skip. Okay. Yeah, like if you saw that on your calculator, you are more than welcome to just go ahead and round that. Like that to me, go ahead and round it. It makes sense to just round it right off your calculator. Okay, so I find finding sides pretty easy for cosine law because it's straight math. I don't have to rearrange anything. Okay, but alas, we don't make anything ever easy. Um, so we're gonna be solving for angle A. I would highly recommend that you guys, if it says angle A, go through and actually label it so that you're aware of where you're solving for. And the reason why I say that is I've seen it a million times where it says solve for angle A and then somebody solves for angle B and then leaves it there. Technically your math isn't wrong, but you didn't answer the question. So that's actually a zero. That's a harsh reality, right? Cause you didn't answer the question. Um, even though you did cosine law, right? And everything like that, still a problem Wait, what? for a different angle. If you solved, like if this was the question on the test and you solved for angle B, even if you did it correctly, because you didn't solve for angle A, you lose marks, all of them. Okay, let's get to this. So earmuffs again. So what side is going to attach with the 18? What's gonna be on the outside of the equation? I just said it, it's 18, sorry. That was very unexciting. Cause this is my matching set, right? My 18 and my angle. So I'm gonna have 18 squared equals and again, it doesn't matter the order of the other side. So we're going to have 30 squared plus 22 squared minus 2 times 30 times 22 times cos of A. All right. Now, you guys know that this whole thing is multiplied, right? You guys know that all that's multiplied? because there's no order of operation there. So just keep that in mind. We're gonna, divide. We're gonna end up having to divide, yes. Okay, so let's do what we got. So we got 18 squared ooh, is 324, 900, 22 squared is 484. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and multiply those together. I can't really do too much with them uh, 60 times 22 is going to be 13 or 1,320 cos wait, wait, wait. of A. Wait. Um, I got... Okay, wait, no, I already said. You good? Yes. Okay. So the reason why I do that is to remind myself that this is the coefficient on cos of A. This is where I see people make a lot of order of operation mistakes. They go ahead and they go 900 plus this minus 1300, and that would be incorrect. Okay, so I'm going to have my 324 equals 1384 minus 1320 cos of A. Remember that this is a coefficient. So you can't combine it with a constant. Um, but I would need to get cos alone. So what's my next step? Okay, all right. I'll tell you then. Move the 1384. Move the 1384. So I'm going to subtract 1384 from both sides. So now I'm left with negative 1320 times cos of A. And then when I do the subtraction, I'm going to be negative 1060 on this side. 
everybody's like, oh, we got negative numbers. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. But it's not. It's not terrible yet. So how do I get cos A by itself? Divide. I got to divide out that. So I'm dividing out the negative 1,320. I got a repeating decimal there. I don't know if you can see it on my calculator. Um, so all I did was draw the line over zero three that indicates that it goes on forever. Okay, how do I solve for angle A? You go back and put this in. Yep, yeah. what's the step I gotta do? Second that second function button there, right? So. So second function, cos, I'm pulling it from my other line, and A is equal to, let's round to the nearest whole degree, so 37 degrees. And that's it. So. Again, the only place that I see people make mistakes are one, solving for an angle that they, I didn't ask for, or two, combining these two things, which would be incorrect, okay? Which would be bad order of operations. So that's where I find that people make the most um, errors in, uh, in the past. All right, so example numero three. All right, here we go. Posts of a hockey goal are two meters apart. Uh, one year, we fought about this because they didn't believe that that was an NHL regulation. It is, FYI, if you wanna Google it. In the NHL, hockey goals are two meters apart. Just FYI, if you're a goalie, you need to know this. So let's draw a picture. So there's my goal posts, and between them, is two meters. A player attempts a shot from at the net from a point 6.5 meters away. There's your hockey player. There's a stick. Um, so he's two, he's 6.5 meters away. And we don't know if he's 6.5 meters away from both sides, but we will say from one side he is. Oh, and eight meters from the other post. There we go. Okay, diagram not drawn to scale because that looks like an isosceles triangle to me. Uh, within what angle must the shot be made in order to score a goal? Is that, would that be the angle with the hockey stick? Yes, because he's not shooting from here and he's not shooting from this one. He's shooting from down here. So we're trying to find that angle. That's a pretty good hockey stick, folks. Just saying. Can, the can letter. we use A, B, C? Sure. You actually don't need to use any letters if you don't want to. But if, if it helps you to put them on there, then drop them on. So what are my earmuffs? What's going to go on the outside of the equation? Um, two meters two meters on one side and then the unknown angle on the other. Okay, so let's, you know what? I'm gonna let you guys do it. Okay, you do it, I'll do it. I won't, I got a piece of hair in my face. Um, you do it, I'll do it, and we'll see where we go. Talk amongst yourselves. Those were the two, see I wrote myself a note, things I need to talk to you about.
We're going to round to the nearest whole degree. Am I good? I'm just sitting here on my phone. Can I show you guys what I got or do you need a few more minutes? I got some nods, I got some people frantically writing. People at home, where are you? Are you just waiting for me to put this up? You're done? Yes. Nice. It's a pretty small angle that they have to shoot from. And they probably don't have time to lay a protractor out on the ice. Just saying. Okay, this is what I got. I skipped a few steps, but I think I hit all the really important ones. Did you guys get 11? No, yes, yeah? Yes. Yay, okay. So that's cosine law. Like I said, there's some danger points, danger points, danger points. These have to stay together. You can't do any subtraction here. These have to stay together. Um, other than that, like, I mean, it's order of operations. And the only reason why I'm harping on that is because I think sometimes we get math fatigued and we don't, um, we lose sight of the important details and pre is all about the details. So that's it for cosine law. You have the rest of the period to work on your cosine law assignment, which I would recommend that you do because in people, in class people, you have your quiz tomorrow on ambiguous cases and cosine law. People at home, I would also recommend